Hello learners, welcome to the lesson 21, the village pharmacy of secondary level English. Coming to the introduction portion of this lesson, this lesson is about the benefits of neem tree. Neem is one tree whose medicinal benefits are unlimited. There is no other tree which has such qualities as the neem. Almost every part of the neem tree is useful for human beings. Neem is found in tropical countries where it grows without much effort. We all have seen neem trees growing near our houses, on roadsides, in parks, in gardens, in forests and even in our own courtyards. Some of us also know a few of its uses. But do you know that the neem is a wonder tree and that every part of it has several useful medicinal qualities? No wonder it has been called a village pharmacy. Pharmacy is a place where medicines are prepared and given out. Neem not only provides shade but also acts as an air purifier. Hence, it is advisable to grow neem trees in the vicinity of the house or the colony. The story has a sad backdrop story too. Here is a report of the accident, the tragedy at school. It is a report by G. Srinivasan in Kumbakonam. A school in Kumbakonam, Tamil Nadu, in which 94 children died, raised a serious question about the state of basic education in schools. Classes were on as usual at the Sri Krishna High School in Kumbakonam in Thanjavur district in Tamil Nadu. In the school, kitchen preparations were on to cook the mass noon meal, rice, sambar, a side dish and a boiled egg per child. No one noticed a small fire in one corner of the kitchen, but a strong wind, normal in the month of Audi, July, August we say, in the state, seemed to breathe new life into the flames and suddenly they leapt to catch the thatched roof. Soon the smoke filled the rooms and the children ran to the door screaming for help. There was no other escape route as the flames spread and then the burning thatch fell. 75 children were burnt alive. Of the other 30 who suffered severe burns, 18 died in the hospital. This was the frontline cover story published on 13th August 2004 and the issue was 16th July to August 13, 2004. This can be looked into the www.frontlineconnect.com. Neema, the central character of the story, returns one day from the school holding a Neem sapling in her hand. The school had distributed these saplings to children and asked them to plant them near their house in the memory of these children. The school staff and students had paid a tearful homage to all these children. Now learners, read the text of the lesson and see what it tells you about the benefits of neem tree. You will perhaps guess why school chose neem saplings to grow in their memory. The story is told in the form of a dialogue. Coming to the objectives, learners, you will be able to identify ways to honor memory of our loved ones, appreciate the values of trees and other natural resources in our life, recognize the importance of applying traditional knowledge to modern life, relate words to situation and use them in context, use adjectives of quantity and quality in an appropriate manner, identify the active and passive voices and relate to real life situations. You will be able to write a message and draft a notice. Coming to the gist of the story, the story takes off with the sad news about the loss of precious lives of 94 children in a school fire. Nima's school, like all other schools, wishes to pay homage to these children and the best way of doing this is to plant saplings. The school distributes saplings to students to plant them near their house. When Nima comes home, she tells her family about it. This sets of a great discussion between the grandfather and Nima, wherein grandfather tells her why Neem Tree is also called a village pharmacy. This is perhaps the only tree which has the maximum medicinal use. Every part of the tree has medicinal properties and this is why it is very precious tree. It has a long life and so is a befitting tribute to the memory of the little lives lost in the fire. Learners, let us understand the text 21.2.2 part 1. You may read from the lines, it was already 6 to part of your school. One day Nima comes home late from school. 
Her parents are worried, just as your parents would get worried if you came in late from somewhere. When she finally comes home, she tells her family what transpired in school. She and her classmates planted 94 neem saplings in memory of the children who had lost their lives in the terrible fire that broke out in a school in Kumbakonam in Tamil Nadu. Neema's school has decided to pay their tributes to the 94 children in this unique way. By the time Neema reached home, it was already 6 in the evening. Neema was a student of class 8. Her father, Inevan, is a pediatrician at the city hospital. Her mother, Vembu, and her grandparents, who had come from the village, were very much worried, whilst they were waiting. Neema entered. She had a sapling in her hand. Everybody wanted to know why she was late. Neema told them that the school had decided to pay a tearful homage to the memory of 94 children who died under the most tragic circumstances in Kumbakonam. Vembu, her mother, commented that it was indeed a terrible accident. Grandmother wanted to know more details, so she asked Neema what the school did to pay homage. Neema told her that they had planted 94 neem saplings in the school campus in memory of the departed souls. The saplings were a symbolic reminder of each of the innocent lives that were lost in their prime years of life. She said she had brought home one sapling to be planted in their garden. Vembu said that it was a fitting gesture on the part of the school. Why do you think this was a fitting gesture? It was a fitting gesture because the sapling would grow into a useful tree which would live long enough to serve people. Similarly, the little children who could be compared to a sapling would have probably grown into adults who would have served their people and country. There could be no other symbolic gesture better than this. Now, learners, let us read part 21.2.2 of the story. You may read from the lines, yes, I agree, to created an interest in medicine. In the previous section, we were told about Nima, who brought home a, a neem sapling to plant in her garden. She showed it to her grandparents. In this section, we shall see how Nima's grandparents reacted. Nima's grandmother told her that her grandfather had a lot of knowledge about the neem tree, so she should ask him questions. Nima got very excited. She went to the grandfather to find out more about the neem tree. This was a good idea because she had a science exhibition coming up in her school the next week. There could be nothing better than using the information to prepare for the exhibition. Nima's grandfather was in the habit of using many neem products. He told her about the benefits of neem for general health and fitness. He also revealed to her the secret of her father's motivation to become a doctor. He had often watched his grandfather prepare medicines out of the neem tree and that is how he got attracted to a career in medicine. Anevan, her father, agreed with his father that the neem had a lot of medicinal values. Nima admitted she did not know but she said she would definitely like to know. Grandma immediately told Nima that her grandfather would indeed be the right person to tell her about the benefits of neem. She said that he had lived in the village all his life and so he knew better than anybody else. It was indeed the village pharmacy. Nima pleaded with grandpa to tell her about the medicinal value of the neem. She added that she has to prepare for a science exhibition which was going to be held in the school the coming week. She felt that she could give this idea to her class and maybe all her friends would agree to preparing something on the neem. Grandpa started by admitting that in his village, they did indeed call the neem tree their village pharmacy. He started by showing his teeth to Nima. He said he was 80 year old and his teeth were still so white and healthy. Could anyone believe that his teeth were absolutely healthy even at this age? He said it was all because he brushed his teeth with neem twigs every morning. Then he showed his skin. It was free from any blemishes. 
it was soft and shiny like a little child's. This was also due to the neem paste that he applied on his body every day instead of chemical soaps which city people use. He said he was hale and hearty and did not suffer from any ailment even at this old age. The secret of his good health was that he drank neem juice every day. He explained that neem juice has a purifying quality. It purifies blood and cures all ailments. Then he turned around and asked Neema if she knew what motivated her to become a doctor. He disclosed how keenly he would observe his father, Neema's great-grandfather, prepares medicine from various parts of the Neem. He would use all its parts, its bark, seeds and leaves to prepare medicines. So fascinated was he that he decided to become a doctor because of his interest in medicine. Let us now read 20.2.3 part 3 of the lesson. You may read from the lines traditionally in India too and you are a wonder girl too. Continuing with his story of neem benefits, grandfather told her the neem was also an insect repellent, a pesticide, an air cooler and a medicine for several diseases. He then asked her if she knew what would be the temperature if she sat under the neem tree. He told her that it is 10 degrees lower than the surrounding area. Besides neem trees grow very fast, they grow anywhere in any kind of soil and last for hundreds of years. Neema's grandfather also tells her how wonderful her name is and that she is a wonderful girl just like the neem tree. Let us now find out how neem has been used as a medicine for many countries in India. In this section, we are told that the practice of using neem as a medicine is perhaps countries old. It had the unique powers to fight inflammation, hypertension and ulcers. It could provide a cure for diabetes and malaria. If applied on boils, rashes and wounds, they disappear in no time. Grandfather tells Neema that neem is a cure for practically every disease. In grandfather's words, you name it and the neem cures it. It's a panacea for many ailments. A panacea is one single medicine which cure, which would actually cure almost any disease or ailment. Neem, he said, had a very ancient history which dates back to nearly 4000 to 4000 500 years ago, perhaps to the Harappan civilization, which is considered one of the oldest and earliest civilizations. The East Indian Harappans used various parts of the neem tree to make cosmetics and medicinal products. Even today, there is evidence of these uses. This evidence can be seen in the remains excavated at the Harappan site. Today, the toothpaste, the soap, and the shampoo that we use are made out of neem. After telling Neema about the history and the various uses of neem, he said he would like to tell her why Mahatma Gandhi conducted his prayer meetings at the Sabarmati ashram under a neem tree. Neem leaf chutney was a part of his everyday diet too. Finally, he told Neema that she would be absolutely wrong if she concluded that the neem only had medicinal properties. Neem has the wonderful ability to increase the fertility of the soil when added to it as a manure. It is eco-friendly, it is a good insect repellent too. Lately, research has proved that its chemical makeup is such that it is resistant to more than 200 different types of insects. Neem is used as a pesticide in farms and agricultural fields. It is a go-friendly. Neem protests crops from harmful insects, viruses and bacteria. The litter of its fallen leaves is rich in organic content and hence serves as a good manure. The neem is also an ideal source of timber for carpentry. Its wood is termite resistant. Grandfather then gives a wonderful piece of information. Neem acts as an air conditioner or cooler, which you use it at home to cool your rooms during the hot 
summer months. He said that the temperature under the neem tree is 10 degrees Celsius less than the surrounding temperature. He said sarcastically that the air conditioners which city dwellers use may not match to the healing, cooling effect of the neem. In this way, neem gives us a free air cooler service. Neem trees are evergreen and perennial, which mean that they do not shed their leaves in any particular season other than autumn. These evergreen perennial trees can grow in any type of soil. They grow very fast. They can reach a height of 30 feet in five years. And if they are not cut down, they may even survive for 200 to 300 years. After telling her all this, grandfather asked Nima if that is what she wanted to know. Nima, who had been listening to her grandfather's description of Neem Tree, she just exclaimed that she was indeed blessed to be named Nima. Vembu, her mother, commented that it was not surprising that Neem is known as the Wonder Tree and you are a Wonder Girl too. Coming to the summary of the lesson learners, the the lesson tells us about a particular school in a village where Nima lives. Nima is a class 8 student. One day she comes late from school. Her parents are worried, but she does not seem to worry. When she reaches home, she saw an anxiety written large on the faces of their parents and grandparents. She tells them that she got late because her school had decided to plant 94 neem saplings in the school campus in memory of the 94 children who had died in a fire accident which broke out in their school in Tamil Nadu. The school wanted to pay homage to these little children by planting these saplings in the school campus. She had brought one sapling home too. Her grandmother then commented that planting a neem sapling was a befitting gesture for the little lives that were lost. She later tells Nima to ask her grandfather to tell her of the different ways in which neem tree helps us. Nima grew curious, so she asked her grandfather to tell her all about neem and why it is called a village pharmacy. Grandfather rattled out a long list of neem's value as a medicinal tree, a tree which could be called a panacea for all ailments and diseases. She now realized that her name too is Nima. What a wonderful name it was. She felt blessed. Learners, coming to the issues and points to remember, you must know and you must take cognizance of these important points of the lesson. Number one, schools and buildings must ensure fire safety precautions. Number two, it is better to plant a tree in the memory of those who have lost their life. Number three, plant useful trees which have a long life too. Number four, neem is one tree which has innumerable medicinal properties. Number five, each part of neem tree is used for one thing or the other. Number six, children should be taught values of things they see in their environment. Number seven, trees give us fresh air and shade and they also act as barriers to noise pollution. Hence, growing trees near the boundary wall of a school helps keep back some of the noise coming from the streets. Number eight, trees not only beautify a place but also serve to keep the greenery of the place intact. Learners, Let's come to the let us learn grammar section of the text which is there and it includes the active voice and the passive voice. Learners, read this sentence. Number one, Anita planted a tree. This sentence is in the active voice. In the active voice, the doer of an action is prominent and important. In this section or in this sentence, Anita is the doer of the action, that is, she planted. This is important. We can write this sentence like this too. A tree was planted by Anita. This sentence now becomes passive. It means the doer, that is Anita, 
has become passive because here the action that is planting and the object, the tree, have become more important than the subject, doer or the person who has done it. Now let us look at another sentence. We have planted 94 saplings in our school. This is active voice. Coming to the passive voice of this same sentence, 94 saplings have been planted in our school. This is passive voice. In this example, the action have been planted is more important. The subject or the doer is not mentioned at all. It is understood that the action has been done by someone. It could have been done by anyone, by us, me, you or by them. So now we know that in the passive voice, the object and the action are important and the subject may or may not be mentioned at all. What changes are done when we transform a sentence from active to passive voice or vice versa? Now learners, try to study this table to understand the changes that take place while changing active voice into passive voice. Now the first sentence is simple present and it is in simple present. The active voice is we grow vegetables here. The passive voice is vegetables are grown here by us or this is this is optional but it can be converted like this. The simple present we grow vegetables here when converted into passive voice becomes vegetables are grown here. When coming to present continuous we are growing vegetables here. It's passive vegetables are being grown here by us. Present perfect we have grown vegetables here. It's passive. Vegetables have been grown here by us. Past simple. We grew vegetables here. Passive of this, vegetables were grown here by us. Past continuous. We were growing vegetables here. And passive of this sentence is, vegetables were being grown here by us. Past perfect. We had grown vegetables here and passive of this, vegetables had been grown here by us. Did you notice the whole action centered around the subject that is the verb or object? Each time the doer was made less important, its position was interchanged with the object vegetables. The doer that is by us has been put in brackets to know or to make you show that the Sentence conveys the meaning even if we don't use these two words. It is understood that someone must have done the action, but that someone is not important for the message. Usually, the subject, if it is general and not very specific, it can be avoided. Now, study the paragraph. It is about people tree. People is a large, fast-growing tree. It has heart-shaped leaves. It sheds its leaves in the months of March and April. It is found, it is underlined, it is found in large numbers all over India. The bark of the tree is used for treating a swelling of the neck. The roots are chewed to prevent gum diseases. The powdered fruit is used for treating asthma. Now, here all the underlined verbs indicate the passive voice of the sentence. Learners, always remember, the passive voice always, always uses the third form of the verb, that is, something like this, hidden, found, used, chewed. Number two, passive voice is not used when writing notices, newspapers, reports, reporting experiments, procedures or processes, because in all of these situations, the action is important and needs to be highlighted. Let us read this newspaper report about the conservation measures taken by the government to protect trees and forests. Number one, since the measures are more important than the doer, the passive voice has been used to highlight them. Number two, the doer, that is the government, is understood or taken for granted Therefore, it is not mentioned over here. It is like this. 
इंदौर 16th जनवरी 2011 कंजर्वेशन मेजर्स आर बीइंग टेकन आर बीइंग टेकन हैज बीन अंडरलाइंड टू सेव द फॉरेस्ट ऑफ मध्य प्रदेश लोकल पीपल आर आस्क्ड अबाउट व्हिच ट्रीज टू प्लांट समटाइम्स सैपलिंग्स आर टेकन फ्रॉम द नर्सरीज एंड प्लांटेड बाय द कम्युनिटी मेंबर्स regular cutting of small branches twigs and leaves is done to make them grow faster people are told about the importance of trees learners now do the exercise number 1 on your own you have to change the given sentences from the active voice to the passive voice second grammar section is adjectives over here learners i hope you remember that an adjective is a describing word it describes something or somebody it may describe a person a feeling or emotion a place an object an activity or a situation it also shows the qualities or quantity of a noun or a pronoun adjectives of quality learners let us now look at the adjectives of quality spring is a magical season magical trees and bushes offer their tender leaves to the fresh air and many delicate flowers open out into the warm sun over here magical tender delicate warm adjectives of quality all the highlighted words magical tender delicate and warm are words that describe season leaves flowers and sun they answer the question of what kind therefore such describing words are called adjectives of quality now learners do the exercise given in your book on your own you need to identify the adjectives of quality in the paragraph and underline them coming to adjectives of quantity these are also describing words but they usually tell us number or quantity of something try to read this passage and study the highlighted words the passage goes on like this all trees have many leaves many quantity the purpose of most leaves is to produce food through photosynthesis most leaves trees live for hundreds of years hundreds the oldest tree in the world is more than 5000 years old 5000 years trees take a long time to grow but sadly millions of trees millions of trees in the world have been cut for development adjectives of quantity indicate how much or how many of an item or an object being talked about words like some little few many half enough are some examples of adjectives of quantity learners do the exercise number 2 on your own you need to fill in the blanks with suitable options from the words given over there in the book next section is message writing learners a message is an informal means of communication the receiver of the message has to sift through the given message and pick out the most vital bits of information then he or she should be able to reproduce that information in order to convey to in order to convey it to the person for whom it is intended format date time name of the person to whom the message is directed body of the message name of the writer you need to remember certain points while writing a message while writing the body of the message some points have to be kept in mind only the most important details should be given no new information should be added grammatically correct sentences should be used indirect or reported speech should be used the message should be presented within a box the word limit for a message should be around 50 words 
learners, there is one sample over here. You receive a telephone call from your mother's office when she is not at home. You have a conversation with the speaker, but you have to go for your tuition class. So you leave a message for your mother. Write the message within 50 words using the information given here. Do not try to add any new information. So the message goes on like this. Anil, hello. Mr. Sharma, hello. May I speak with Miss Mishra, please? I am Ravi Sharma from the office. Anil says, mom is not at home right now. Mr. Sharma over from the other side says, in this case, can you give her a message? It is urgent. Please tell her that the meeting fixed for tomorrow has been rescheduled. Ask her to check her mail as soon as possible for the details. Please do not forget to inform her. Anil from the other side says, don't worry, I will tell her as soon as she returns. Now, over here, a sample message has been given. Please try to study this, learners. The date, probably 5th March, time 3.30 p.m. You need to write mom. Mr. Sharma from office called up to say that the meeting fixed for tomorrow has been rescheduled. He wants you to check your mail as soon as possible for the details. He said it was urgent. Anil. So this was a message left by Anil, message written by, message conveyed by Anil to her mom. Exercise over here for you learners. Raja comes home from school and finds the door locked. Since he has a duplicate key, he enters and finds a note from his mother kept on the table. In it, she explains that she had to rush to the hospital with Miss Mishra, their neighbor who had met with an accident. She has also written that he should have the rice and curry kept on the dining table for lunch. He could heat the food in the microwave oven if he wanted to, but he should be very careful while handling the switch. Learners, now write the message which Raja's mother left for him. Next section is learners, note or notice writing. A notice is a formal means of communication. The purpose of a notice is to announce or display information to a specific group of people. Notices are generally meant to be pinned up on specific display boards, whether in schools or in public places. Notices issued by the government appear in newspapers. Coming to the format, a notice should be written in a specific format. The name of the organization issuing the notice. The title, notice. A heading to introduce the subject of the notice, the date, the body of the notice, the writer's signature name in block letters and designation. Now you will have something like this, name of the organization, office issuing the notice, date and then parallel to it notice, then heading extreme right side, body of letter extreme right side and it can be in between also that is it can take a uh, center stage also in the uh, format of notice writing then signature extreme left side name extreme left side designation extreme left side now points to remember a well written notice must inform the readers about the five w's what is going to happen that is the event where it will take place when it will take place, that is the date and time. Who can apply or is eligible for it? Whom to contact or apply to? That is the issuing authority. Only the most important points should be written. There is an abbreviation AOD, that is any other detail given in the question. One is free to add any relevant information not included in the question. The sentences should be short and grammatically accurate. They should be in the passive voice as far as possible. The notice should be presented within a box. The word limit for a notice is around 50 words. Only the words in the body 
of the notice are counted. Remember this. Information given in a notice must be clear and should not cause any misunderstanding or confusion. A notice must be catchy and appealing. It should attract the reader's attention at once. Increase the visual appeal of your notice by using bold letters, catchy slogans, striking words and phrases, etc. Standard abbreviations are used. There is an exercise which you can do on your own. On the occasion of Environment Day, the school has decided or your study center has decided to organize an environment fair. Ravi, the secretary of the Environment Society, wants to call a meeting of the office bearers of the society to discuss the arrangements for the fair. Learners, now write a notice in not more than 50 words. Coming to conclusion, in this lesson, learners, you have learnt about useful neem trees. How neem trees can be useful and how they are useful. The message of this lesson is that we should be aware of the treasure house of nature around us. If we are aware of it, then we can use trees like the neem for several purposes. We can even plant trees around us in the memory of our loved ones. Nature and the environment are very useful for us in many different ways and we should respect and protect them. Best of luck and thanks.